and just so everybody's clear, th this is a session for beginners, people who haven't gone through initial training. Now, I, I know that some people who are here today probably don't even have their credentials yet, and that's all fine and well. I would just say reach out to any of us. Reach out to me would be my preference. If you want to get signed up and you haven't so far, uh, just, just, give me a, just give me a call or send me an email, and we'll make sure we get you uh, signed up with all your credentials. And the other thing is that uh, we're going to do a recording of this initial session. So for other people inside your company, uh, you'll be able to direct them to this. This will be on the uh, Smart Build YouTube channel if you want to go there. We'll, we'll be creating a, a new page on our website under Roofing Passport. But for right now, you'll be able to find that under the Smart Build uh, YouTube channel. So as you can see, yeah, we're getting some more people popping on right, uh, right as we move along. Uh, but we got we have almost 30 people already, but we've been into it for four minutes. So I think it makes sense probably to go ahead and start the session, Brendan. So um, hand it off to you. And again, just that last minute reminder, if you have any questions, just type it in in the chat. Use the chat button up at the upper right corner and we'll make sure we field your answer. OK. All right. Great. Thanks, Keith. Um, so, yeah. Again, everybody, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, my name is Brendan, and I work with uh, SmartBuild. And SmartBuild is one of the programs that, that uh, makes Roofing Passport possible. Um, so let me see here. Hopefully, you guys can see my screen. I'm presenting my screen now. Um, yes, we so, can. Great. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, so let me just start off with the basics. Uh, roofing Passport, um, all of you are on this meeting because you've been invited to use the program. Uh, right now, the program is invite only. So all of you are on this meeting and have been invited to use the program. Uh, you know, that's all because you, you were, were a reference account or, or you had a reference from either uh, the Sherwin-Williams sales team or the Eagle View sales team. So, it meant something that you got invited to Roofing Passport. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody knows that not everybody gets access to this right now. Um, so it's invite only. Um, the the purpose of Roofing Passport is it, it was developed by, you know, the idea was uh, by Sherman Williams to make it easier for roofing contractors that do metal roofs and suppliers of metal roofing materials, make it easier for, um, those type of users to get roof bids and accurate uh, quotes uh, of steel. We all know it's easy to to uh, to bid a shingle roof. You just base them on square footage, but bidding a metal roof, there's a little bit more skill required. So that was one of the goals of Sherwin Williams and why they developed uh, the Roofing Passport website. And and what I have here on this page is kind of breaking down the different sections of Roofing Passport. So the home page is roofingpassport.com and that's kind of your dashboard as well if i sign out this is what the uh the sign in page looks like so this is where everybody will start and this is the main hub of the system this is where you're going to come and see your job list and it's where you're going to enter new jobs and we'll start off here with the new job button in a minute um if i go back to this drawing here we also have other companies besides for smart build that are work, working with sherman williams and roofing passport um and what those companies do are they create the actual roof data so for instance um eagle view um when you first enter a new job in roofing passport it will be looking at eagle views database so i just hit the new job button and the first thing that we get is an Eagle View aerial database. Um, and so this, this contains all the information that Eagle View has about roofs. You just have to type in an address and you'll get a picture of that roof. Um, so that's one of the components of Roofing Passport. The other one is a company called Roofing Works or Roofing uh, WRX. And what their specialty is for getting roof data that's a, a new roofing project. So if, if I'm building a, a new structure or, or bidding a roof for a new structure, all I have is a plan set for that. And I don't have any aerial photos of that structure yet, obviously. So in that case, you would click the Roofing Works button 
And when you click this button, I, I don't have this enabled yet, but when you click this button and you have it enabled, you'll be able to drag and drop a plan set of your project and Roofing Works will process that and send the 3D data to Roofing Passport. So if you're doing a re-roof job, you have the Eagle View database. If you're doing a new construction or a, a property that might not be covered under Eagle View, um, then you can do a Roofing Works job. And this can be an architectural plan set. It can also be uh, drawings or sketches, you know, made by the contractor. Um, as long as there's dimensions and pitches and it's legible, you can upload a drawing or even aerial photos of the project that you want Roofing Works to run. Um, one of the other sources that we, we also have is Hover. So if, if you have a contractor or you're, you yourself are using the Hover program, we have a way where you can go ahead and you can upload any Hover data or Eagle View data or Top View data, any of those three sources you can upload here. So you can submit a new Eagle View job, you can submit a new Roofing Works job, and you can also upload XML data of, of jobs that have already been processed by one of these three programs. Um, so somebody's asking about the Roofing Works process. Um, it, it's very simple, like I, I don't have it turned on, but if this were turned on, all you need to do is type in a job name and then drag your file, either a, a PDF of the architecturals or a, a picture of the roof. You drag it in here, you put in some comments about what you're looking for, and then you just hit create job. So, so that's really all you need to do to submit a roofing works job. Um, what I can show you right now is the Eagle View uh, data. So, um, and the whole reason I'm starting off with this, guys, is one of the first hurdles that presents itself is people aren't able to log in. And honestly, that's like the most difficult part about the software. Once you're logged in, our success rate is really high with, with people using it. But getting people logged in is the hard part. So, um, like I said at the beginning, you would have been invited by Roofing Passport, so everyone here should have an email from Roofing Passport with an invitation. And in that invitation is credentials for the other programs that you'll need. There's Eagle View credentials, there's Smart Build credentials, and there might even be Roofing Works credentials if you signed up for that. And if you have any questions on getting logged in, you can definitely you can reach out to Keith, Keith uh, Dietzen, uh, the owner of Smart Build, uh, who was just on the meeting before. You can reach out to myself, or you can also reach out to support-roofingpassport at sherwin.com. This is the, the other place you can get support. So, so just reach out to one of us um, and, and say you're having trouble logging in. We'll get online with you and we'll help you through the login process. We're really confident that once you get logged in and you run a couple jobs, um, you'll really see the value in the software. Um, so. All right, let me see, before I start the uh, the full demo, let me see if, what other questions came up. Um, can I make my screen larger? Um, my screen is as big as it gets. What You guys have some tools, I think, on your end to minimize and collapse the menus around my screen. So I think you guys have some tools to make the screen bigger on your end. Um, my screen is just about maxed out uh at the moment so so yeah i think there's some spots where you can hide the the users up at the top and you can also minimize the other toolbars and, and make the screen bigger on your end uh, but yes good question uh let's see uh so one of the questions uh is can you use your own dimensions instead of eagle views dimensions and the answer is kind of no you, you need to submit the job through Eagle View. Eagle View comes up with the dimensions. Now, those dimensions that, and we'll talk a little bit about this once I open a job, but those dimensions that Eagle View give us are really, really accurate. I mean, they're not exact, but they're within an inch or two. So what we recommend is use the dimensions that Eagle View gives you for that roof. Use that for the bid. It's close enough to bid that job. Now, 
if you end up getting that job and you need to make an if you need to make an order we recommend on all jobs go out and measure and verify those dimensions i'll show you some some information you can get from roofing passport to send to the to the job site when you get those dimensions but you don't want to order straight off of eagle views dimensions but they are good enough to quote off of and when you are ready to order we have some tools um where you can you can update the dimensions after they've been entered uh in the file so so that's a really good question about uh can you use your own dimensions instead of eagle views um i, I will i will cover that in this session um so okay so really good question guys to start off with um what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to do a uh, a sample workflow of, of what it would look like. So I am already I'm already logged in to my roofing passport account. And when you guys log in, you'll see that everybody has like their own job list. So this is my job list on on the roofing passport site and I have three jobs. I have, um I, I have uh, a test 2, a test 5 and a test 1. Um so I'm going to go ahead and create a new job here. So that's the first step. And I'm gonna type in the address of my sample job. So we'll say like test three maybe. All right, so I'm gonna type in the address and this address is 6409 Highway 62 NE. And I'm just I'm just pulling a sample job that we've we've done in the past here, and that's in Indiana. Oops. Okay. So I'm gonna I went ahead and I typed in the address. Uh, sometimes you don't need the zip code, but I always recommend if you have the zip code, go ahead and type type it in. So this is four seven one three six. All right. So there's the address of of the building that I want to quote. So I type in the address and I hit locate. And here we go. Um, I don't know why that picture got cut off. I don't see that very often. But uh, yeah, so that that's the property I want to run. So once that I've, I've confirmed that that's the building, and again, I don't know why I'm not getting the whole building. Um, there we go. Okay. I just had to zoom in and zoom out. There we go. Now we've got the whole building. So this is the, 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 uh, the house that I want to quote. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the create job button. And at the point that I hit the create job button, I'm actually just going to hit cancel because I don't want to really create this. But if I were to hit the create job button, at that point, I'm going to get a new job under pending dimensions. So I'll get the number one there. There's one pending dimension. And that's going to be pending until Eagle View is finished processing the job. Uh, the turnaround time from Eagle View is between two or three hours, uh, depending on the size of the project and, and how busy they are. Um, I, I usually tell people if you add two or three projects in the morning, you'll have them back by the afternoon. Or if you add two or three projects in the afternoon, you'll have them by the time you come back in the office in the morning. So once I've added that job, once, once that job comes back, I will get an email from Eagle View telling me, your job is complete. And at that point, that job will show up on your job list. And here, here's the address that I typed in. And if I click on the job name, I can now view that job in Smart Build. Um, yeah, and the question about if you already have a Hover or Eagle View file, you can just upload that. And then Eagle View won't have to reprocess the job. And, and that is a cheaper option uh, since you've already paid for the Eagle View report. So I'll get into that in a second, but yeah, really good question. Um, so what we see here is I've opened that project, that project that was on my job list in Roofing Passport. When you click on it, it actually opens in Smart Build. Let's do this. So, so when we're looking at it, the, the sources of data for roof geometry, those can be Eagle View, Roofing Works, or Hover. And Roofing Passport is your hub of where you're going to enter your jobs and view your job list. 
but all that information about your job and the materials and the pricing, all of that is basically smart built behind the scenes. So the job list that we're looking at in Roofing Passport is your job list in Smart Build. And when you click on a, one of those jobs, you actually open it up in Smart Build. And, and the reason that we have Smart Build as the database in the background is Eagle View can provide all the geometry of the roof. So Eagle View has created this 3D model. And Eagle View even has dimensions for that 3D model. And what we can do in Smart Build with this 3D model is we can actually lay the metal on top of your roof geometry. Um, so you'll kind of see it in the 3D rendering view. You can also look at it in the drawings view, where when you click on a single roof plane, you'll see all the material that are, are, are need to cover that one plane. And you can just click from roof plane to roof plane. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So you can kind of see at the bottom left, it shows you which planes I'm selecting. But as I go down this list, these are all the panels that we're gonna need to cover the whole roof. And that just happens automatically in Smart Build by picking a product over here on the right. Oops, wrong button. Let me do this. So I'm gonna open this job again. And you'll see, when you first open the job, you'll see some information at the top. We tell you the total lineal foot of metal and the total squares of this project. And that's always up at the top of every project you do. On the left is your basic uh, uh, roof square footage. So the, the roof itself is 4,800 square feet. And then the panel total that we'll need to cover that is a little bit more. There, there's a bit of a waste factor figured in for this. And the more cut up the roof is with more valleys and hips, the, the, more, uh, the more waste factor you're gonna have. So this job is pretty cut up. There's a 20% waste factor automatically figured in for doing this job. Now, once you have that information at the top, you might want to change what your profile is. So the first thing that you're gonna do after you kind of review this information is you're gonna pick what type of roof do you want to put on here? And we can put in asphalt shingle roofs, a clay tile, but you know the most most of the people that use the program are specking metal. So maybe I want to use an inch and a half snap lock instead of an ag panel. I just select that as my material, and now it it will refresh. And now we're laying a different product on top of that roof geometry. And now if we look at the top, we have a total lineal footage of uh, 3,923. We only have a waste factor of 8% now because these panels are skinnier. Um, if I look under drawings and we'll look at all those panels again, you can see those are much skinnier than the first panels that we looked at. And we even have, um, let's see here. Um, we've got uh, ag panel, one inch nail strip, and then inch and a half snap lock and inch and a half mechanical seam. And if there's some other profiles that you need, let us know, we're, we're always adding to this list. So let us know what, what materials you need to see. Um, we can even work with you if you are uh, if you buy Sherwin-Williams coil, we can work with you and you won't need to use this generic list of products, you can put in your own products. So that's a possibility as well. And if you wanna do that again, just reach out to us and uh, once you're approved by Sherwin-Williams, we'll help you upload your own products to this list. Okay, so um, once you open the job, probably the first thing to do is pick the product that you wanna use. Here I have an inch and a half mechanical seam, 16 inch. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is review my material list. And you can do that a couple ways. Uh, one way to review your material list is click the job review button. And we've got these different categories across the top. The first category is cladding. So this will be like the, the metal panel on top of your roof. And we've got quantities and lengths for all the panels 
that are on this list or that are on this roof. And if you want to see this list in a PDF file, all you have to do is hit the print button and anything you're looking at in Smart Build will print onto a PDF. So you can look at it here uh, on the list and scroll down, or you can just hit the print button and you can look at it on a PDF format. And again, it's giving us uh, the, the material that you picked, the color, the quantity, and the length of each panel. All right, um, if we go to our trim list, here's all the trim that we're gonna need to cover that roof. And again, if I go to the 3D view, we can highlight like each trim part as we go. So, so there's a ridge cap. If I highlight this ridge cap, it'll tell us what it's using for the ridge cap. And then it'll also tell us what are the other things getting applied to the material list besides for just the ridge cap. So here we've got 31 feet of ridge cap, but we're also gonna need six Z closures, 40 pop rivets, 240 pancake screws, some tape sealant and some tube sealant. So all of those are baked in whenever you do a, a, a hip or a, a, a ridge or a hip. If I click on a valley piece, these are all the things that'll come in when you pick a valley or when you lay a valley down on your roof geometry. So on the 3D model, you can just kind of verify that you have the right parts and pieces in the model. There's a gable end. Um, here's all the things that come along with, with a gable end trim part. So basically what I'm doing with these buttons along the top is I'm looking at the same data, just different views of that data. Here's the material list of the data. And here's a 3D you know, picture of the data, but you can still interact with it. You can still pick it and see what you've chosen and what's coming along with that. So because all those accessories are built in, you not only have all your trim parts, but you have all your accessories as well. Um, so for this product, we're gonna need uh, almost 4,000 clips. We're gonna need uh, 11,000 pancake screws, so a lot of bags of screws, and then your, your sealant and your underlayment. There's even places, uh, they, they aren't set up right now, but you could set up factors or equations in the background for labor and freight calculations. But right now those aren't set up. So we've got your, your 3D rendering view. So this is your, your 3D model of the roof. And again, if I hit the print button, let me get a view of it. There we go. If I hit the print button, I'm gonna get a PDF of this 3D model because that's what I'm looking at. If I'm in the job review, these are your material lists. And again, you can hit the print button and get a PDF of your material lists. Uh, the drawings, this is gonna show you the roof data uh, pitch by pitch. Advanced edit is the next view. What advanced edit is for is if you're working on this project and maybe there's a roof that's a little, there's a section of the roof that's different. Like maybe this lower roof section uh, has a different color or a different product. Maybe you don't want any metal at all down here. Maybe they're, they're putting like some shake shingles or something that you don't sell. What you can do in advanced edit is you can pick any roof plane and then you can skip it saying, hey, I don't want to put any material on this. Or you can change the color or you can change the material just by going into advanced edit. Uh, most roofs I know are probably the same product all over, but if you did have one roof plane, one or two roof planes that were different, that's what you can do and come into advanced edit and change the settings for just one roof plane. The next button is the bids button. And when you click bids, it's gonna ask you to create a new bid. And the reason it does this is you can create several different bids for the same project. So I could bid this product or this project with a uh, exposed fastener uh, type uh, panel. And then I could also give them a mechanical seam uh, panel and I could compare the two quotes. So I'll just hit create new here. Let's say this is bid one. So here's that material list that we were looking at, but it's all put on one page. So if you wanna get a printout of your material list all on one page and not 
broken up category by category, you'd come to the bid page. And then here you can uh, hit the print button. You can make changes. So if you want to change the quantities on some of these, you could. And there's even a place to update the pricing. Now, right now out of the box, when you first sign up, there is no pricing in the database. But that doesn't mean you can't add your own pricing. Um, you know, we could say, hey, this is uh, 340 a foot. So there you go. So 3,200 lineal feet is going to cost $13,000 if it's 340 a foot. Now, these prices are all set to zero in this example, but you could go into the database before you do a job. You could set your pricing, and then your prices would all show up here. So setting pricing is a more uh, advanced feature of the roofing passport system. And, and we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. Um, so yeah, let's look, so we got a couple questions here. Uh, so one of the questions is, if we already have hover or an Eagle View order, can we just import that or do we have to order it through passport? And the answer to that is, if you go in and you create a new job, you would pick the upload XML option, and then you can upload an XML here, and it only costs $15 to upload. But you do need to still run it through the Roofing Passport page. But again, it's only $15 compared to, you know, between 35 and 75 for Eagle View, and it's 75 for Roofing Works. So, so if you already have the source data from Hover, or if you already have an Eagle View report, you can go um, to Eagle View's website, download the XML file, or go to the Hover program, download the XML file, upload it right here for $15. Um, so the answer is yes, it still has to go through Roofing Passport, but you don't need to submit a new Eagle View job or a new Roofing Passport job. There's really, it's just you need to upload the file and then that will get passed to Smart Build at that point. So I hope that answers that question. Um, yep, and I'll show a couple more uh, profiles. Um, will the upload files work for roof scopes that have already been ordered? Um, we're in rural Montana. Eagle View doesn't always have images for us out here. So. Um, roof scopes, I imagine that must be another program for roof estimating. And right now we don't work with them. Um, we only work with Hover, Top View, and Eagle View are the only three programs that we can upload XMLs from. Um, but I, you know, it's a good question. Uh, go ahead and email one of us about that. And, you know, if we have enough requests, we'll start working with anyone, I imagine. <laughs> so just let us know. Um, the next question is, can we upload our supplier pricing? Definitely. You can definitely work with your supplier and either have your supplier enter the pricing or you could get your pricing from the supplier and then enter it into your database. Kind of just depends on how you want to do that. But that is the real power of the program. Um, if your supplier's um, database is set up in Smart Build, then that pricing is taken care of by them. And all you need to do is put in your markup. Uh, on those prices. So you'll see the cost of what it's costing you for each part, and you'll also have your markup of what you're charging uh, your customer for each part. So, so the answer is yes, you can definitely upload your supplier pricing, and you can also you know, keep track of costs and prices. Yep, and, and, and yeah, to go along with that, it, it does, I was just showing you guys how if you hadn't uploaded your prices, you could type in the prices for each trim. But there's a place in the database that you can go to set up your pricing before you ran a job. And in that case, these would come out with uh, with prices. Okay, and I will show you guys those backend settings here in a minute. Um, let me just continue with what you can do in, in the Smart Build uh, interface. So basically from Smart Build, you can get three main things. One would be a, a 3D rendering of what the roof's going to look like with the material you've picked uh, along with the color that you've picked. 
Um, and then those 3D renderings you can print out and you could you know, send to the user if you wanted to. And you could just do that by hitting the print button. The second thing and all the accessories based on the trim. And those accessories will change based on the product you picked. So if I switch this back to ag panel, we know that you don't use clips for ag panel and all you're gonna need is wood grip screws. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna change what your accessories and what your trim list reports based on the material you picked over here on the right. Uh, also on the right is your job information tab. So this is a place where you can come in and fill out information about the customer, um, you know, their contact information, what the name of the job is, you can update all of this. And, and this information that you put in the job info, this will come out on your outputs. Um, so, so we give you a 3D rendering, we give you a material list, and the final thing is we can give you drawings, a 2D uh, construction drawings of that roof. So the way to do that is, I'm gonna hit outputs, save my changes. So up at the top we have an output, button and the default outputs here uh, we have roof layout roof layout with pitch and a roof report and all of these are PDF files they're in the PDF section here at the top so whatever I check on I will get the a PDF file of each of these pages so I just check on the PDFs that I want and I hit download so this is going to give me again material lists and 2D drawings of how to install that roof. Or these are the type of, this is the drawing that you could bring out to uh, the field to go measure. You know, go measure this project and make sure that a 20 foot two panel is gonna be long enough to cover your main roof section. Or come up to the peak and make, make sure that 29 foot five is your longest dimension there. So this is one of those outputs you can print up and take to the field with you uh, to field verify the, the dimensions. Um, we'll also show you the roof pitches. So these are all the roofs numbered with the different pitches. Then we've got your material list. So again, that's the same, uh, you know, the list of all your panels, uh, quantities and lengths. If we had pricing, we could show the pricing here, but it's all just set to zero still. And then we have what we call a roof report. And this will give you square footage information. Here's all your trim totals. And then we'll go on and give you it broken down plane by plane what uh, what goes into each roof pitch. Um, so here's all the materials that are on roof one. Here's all the materials listed for roof two. So this is a good double check to make sure you have everything you need uh, before you order and if you need to make any changes. Um, so, so that's, that's part of the, uh, the outputs button. We also have custom outputs that you can set up. So we have, um, oh boy, I don't have an example on this one. Uh, we have like an Excel file that you can download. Let me download that. And we also have like a, uh, a Word doc file that you can set up so that it, it will you know, have your company's logo at the top. Let me go, let me go here, here we go. Here's an example. Um, so this is an example of a template that you can upload. And that template's gonna have kind of your, your boilerplate information, and then it's going to have tokens. And these tokens can be whatever information you wanna pass from Smart Build onto your Word document. So you'd op upload something like this and have your logo and your company name, and then all these things with the curly brackets around them, these would all come in with information about the project. So how much did the project cost? Uh, what was the sales tax? Uh, what was the color? What was the, uh, the roof material? Um, you can even put a picture of the job, and all that stuff will automatically get filled out by just filling out a, a template. Um, and here is a, uh, an Excel file I just downloaded for this project. 
Oops, not that. There we go. So this is one of our, our other reports. Um, again, it shows you all the job information at the top. Uh, if you had pricing, it would show you your totals in here. And then each tab has your quantities, lengths of panel, quantities, lengths of trim, and then all your accessories. So this is another way, instead of like a PDF with uh, just, you know, a couple pages of materials, you can export this material list as an Excel file as well, or as a Word doc file. So yeah, those are basically the parts of the tool uh, that you can, uh, um, all the things that you can do with the roof geometry once it comes through. Um, you can print from this, or you can hit the output button and get an output to use. You can fill out your customer information, and you can change the materials here. And then once you've done all that, we have a save button at the top. We also, when you're done, you can click the job list button, and you can go back to your job list. And we have another button here on this job list that lets you copy a job. And this is a really uh, uh, powerful feature because now I have two jobs at the same address. You only pay for that job getting processed once through Roofing Passport. Once that job's processed through Roofing Passport and it shows up here on the job list, you can copy it as many times as you want. Here we go, now I got copy two and copy one, which I can just open up these jobs, rename. But the important thing is I can make changes. So if you have one of those customers that can't make up their mind, you can bid this job three or four different times. Just keep copying it, make changes to what the customer asked for, and then re-quote it for them. And, and you're not paying any extra for these. Um, there's also some spots where we can put in some job notes. So you can click on one of these orange uh, chat bubbles and put in job notes for any job and hit OK. And then those job notes will be saved. So if you need to pass this file to somebody else or if you need, need to just remind yourself of what the status is of this job, uh, you can put in notes there. Um, also on this page, what we're looking at here is if you're in Roofing Passport, See this update. And there you go. Now I have five jobs on my active roofing passport list. I've got the copy two, the copy one, and these other ones. So what this means is in Smart Build, I have the same job list. This is really just reading my job list from Smart Build. So when I copy stuff here, it shows up on this job list as well. Um, the other things you can do when you're on the Smart Build job list is you'll have a settings drop down. And this settings drop down is where you can come change things like the pricing. So if I go to settings and pricing, we have a place here to put your cost, your markup, and the price. And we have that for all your, your uh, categories, uh, trim, hardware, fasteners. And you can update these prices here. You make the save here in your pricing table, then when you go run a job, those will the, those are the prices that will show up for, for all the different parts. Um, there's also a page called the framing rules. And what you can do on the framing rules page is you can set up your defaults. So let's say I don't use ag panel as my default. Maybe my default is nail strip or snap lock. I'll pick that as my default, save it, and then every job I do after that, it will use that as my first material that it picks. Um, maybe there's some materials on here that you don't want to show. You know, maybe you never bid asphalt shingle or a clay tile. If you want to take those off the list, you hit this green edit button, and you can delete those from your list, and then you won't see those options anymore when you do a job. So you can just you can. Uh, um, customize this list to match what you bid. So I just changed the order, hit save. Now when I look at this list, it's a much shorter list and I have my number one product at the top and then it kind of goes down. So you can make a lot of changes to what material 
types are, are in your answers um, from, from the settings framing rules. Uh, the packages, this is like a more advanced setting, but this is where you could put in like your labor calculations, your freight calculations. Uh, we have some example packages in here for, for labor, freight. You could also do like, you know, miscellaneous fees or dumpster. You can add whatever you want to this list. And basically what happens in the background is there's calculations happening in the background that look at the square footage and, and what the, you know, whatever calculations, if, if you have an hourly labor, or I mean, not an hourly, but if you charge, uh, you know, 200 bucks per square, you could put that $200 of labor per square calculation here in the packages. So, so this is where you can really co come in and customize what other things do you want on the material list besides for uh, roof panels, trim, and accessories. So that's what the packages are for. And then finally, the outputs. I, I said uh, at the beginning, you can kind of customize your own outputs. Um, so this is where you'd come and create outputs, customize outputs, upload output templates. Um, really what you can do here is you can make a quote letter. So when you down or when you output uh, uh, this Word doc, you can make a few changes and then print it as a PDF and send that off to your customer. And that can all be done on the outputs page. Um, and again, if you guys have questions about setting up some of these settings, customizing the site to be, you know, uh, fit your company, let us know. Reach out to us and we'll schedule a training session. Um, for instance, I didn't even talk about the first setting here called Customize. And this is where you can come to upload your company's logo at the top. That way, when you do your outputs, all your, your logo will show up on all your outputs. And you do that through Settings and Customize. Um, the final thing I want to show you guys on this page is we have a support button. So if you want to reach out to us at Smart Build, just hit the support button. We have a number here that you can call, or you can just type in what your question is, put in your email, uh, the topic, and type in your question and send that off. And we this will come to my desk, and we have uh, three other support agents that this will also ping. So if you have any questions, want to set up a training time, this support button is another good way to reach us. Um, the other way to reach us is support-roofingpassport at Sherwin.com. That's the other email. But if you have my email or Keith's email, feel free to email us directly as well. Um, so really the point of us uh, doing these presentations is to encourage you guys to reach out to us and, and, and get some additional training. So we realize there is a bit of a learning curve, but once you do two or three jobs, you'll really understand the uh, the time savings that comes in with uh, doing your takeoffs this way. All right, so it's about all that I have. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, Suzanne, do you want to unmute and see if anybody has a question that they they want to uh, say over the mic, or you can also type those sure. in. Sure. I'll unmute everyone, but I think individuals will still need to unmute themselves. Yeah, to unmute yourself, if you want to talk, um, just go ahead and, and click that microphone button. And once it's green, we should be able to hear you. Uh, but feel free to fire away with any questions. Uh, I know that was a lot of information. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, so somebody here said, uh, uh, looks pretty straightforward, and, and it is. The, the hard part is just understanding the different parts of the tool and, and what buttons you need to click. But once you get the hang of it, it's super simple. And they say that they're already using the framing version. So that would be like, smart build for uh, garages and sheds and post frame buildings and steel buildings. That's great that you're already using this software um, or, or that software. When you sign up for Roofing Passport, something to know, if you're already using the, the, the regular smart build program where you design buildings, um, 
you're going to have two different job lists. You're basically going to have two different databases. You'll have a job list for all your roofing passport jobs, and you'll have a job list for your, your buildings. And the confusing part is you'll have to know to switch back and forth, depending on which type of project you, uh, you're building. Um, so, yep, just reach out to us if you have more questions about that. But we, we love it when uh, people that use the Smart Build product are also sign up for Roofing Passport. So, yeah, good question. Um, and, again, guys, it's it's not something that you're going to kind of, uh, uh, you know, automatically jump in and everything's going to work. It, it does take a little bit of setup. But if you put in an hour or two of setup, I really think you can uh, – uh, improve your, your bid rates and, and turnaround times. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, J chat GPT could help you come up with some, uh, some package formulas. Um, that's actually a pretty good question. Uh, those formulas that you put in, they're just like Excel equations. So, I'm not really great at Excel. I, I'm learning, uh, but I'm not great. Um, but yeah, you can use it for finding errors in the formula. Exactly. Or I know there is a chat GPT function where you can say, you know, make an Excel equation that does X, Y, and Z. And then that equation you could probably import into Smart Build. It would need a little bit of, of changing around, but the basic format of that equation would be the same. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I haven't really experimented with that too much, but it's a good idea. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks, everyone, for your time. And, and please follow up. Reach out to us if you want more training. We can do online training sessions, uh, you know, and really dive in and, and get this set up for you. Um, and, and when you do set up a training session uh, with me, uh, most likely I'll give you a promo code to run a free job. So if I haven't already, uh, reach out. and. We'll do a training session. I'll give you a pre promo code so you can you can do a free job uh, while we're testing. So, well, thanks, everybody, for your time today. And uh, I'll see if there's any other questions. And if not, we'll just wrap up. And Suzanne and Keith, thanks for uh, organizing this. And um, again, give us some feedback. And if you want to see more of these, let us know and, and we'll start doing more uh, webinars. So thank you for your time, everyone. Have a nice Thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. Take care.